So Dr. Jacobs, welcome to Dialogue, the Dia Point podcast. We are extremely excited to have you here today for so many reasons. As we've been talking a lot this week, um, Diapoint and Gentile have now signed an agreement, and we're so happy to be able to provide these to people in the region. But I am just as, if not more, excited to have you on the show so that we can learn a lot more about Gentile, how it was created, um, your insights and background, and just everything else about it, and also other things that you have experienced about diabetes and other areas in the medical field as well. So thank you so much for taking the time out to do this. My pleasure to be here and present because we have, I think we have a lot of valuable information that isn't obvious that we can share with your listeners. I really believe that. I, I think if you're, if you're listening, I think you will be in for such a treat that you'll love this show and I believe this is one of the episodes you'll want to go back to and listen twice because there's going to be a lot of good things that are covered and we're all going to learn a lot of stuff together. Um, I, I know I, I learned something new every time I'm speaking with you. So why don't we start from the beginning before we get into Gentile and everything, how it works. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you um, came to be a, an engineer? Um, I was actually going toward electrical engineering. Uh, my master's degree was in electrical engineering. And halfway through my, my PhD program, the University of Southern California, where I got my PhD, introduced uh, a biomedical engineering program. Biomedical engineers um, wind up working in many areas, one of which is how do you design instruments and things that the doctors can use in order to make people healthier. Uh, and that was an area, as soon as they opened it up, it just resonated with me. I gave up about nine months, um, extended my graduation nine months by changing major in sort of midstream. And then mid PhD, just, that that couldn't have been easy. No, and and it was a lot of inertia that had to be overcome. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pam. The um, but it was so satisfying. I mean, to design medical instruments that save people. I did original work on pacemakers, artificial kidneys. Uh, those are the areas, um, and I have an inventive spirit obviously. Uh, and that's why I have like so many patents. I come up with ideas and, um, uh, and it's very satisfying. Gentile, of course, is one example of something that has a much wider appeal than, um, let's say, an artificial kidney. Wow. That's amazing. And I think so many people, they, they forget that it's one thing for the doctor to insert this device or put it in someone or do the surgery. But before it gets to that point, it requires a lot of thought, trial and error, experiments, knowledge, wisdom, and so much more for it to even get there. So if for anyone using a medical device, I, th I think just take a moment and pause and have a lot of gratitude for your biomedical engineers because they really made, made that happen. One of the most important things we have to do is make it easy for the doctor to implant it. Mm, yeah, that's, I guess that's I mean, true. He can't, he can't be fumbling around uh, because we made it difficult for him to do his job. We have to pre-think everything that can go wrong and make it so that when, when that doctor picks that device up, <laughs> whether it's an implanted pacemaker or a genteel, it has to work bang, just like that. No, no, no glitches. Mm. And that's where we put a lot of our, in addition to making the product functional, I think most of your listeners wouldn't realize what a high percentage of the of our work efforts we put in to making the product foolproof and easy to use. That's that's very true. And that not something that I ever thought of, of course. And even thinking about diabetes all the time, and there's 
new device or something new. And of course, we never stop and think about all the thought that went into that because we want to know what it does for us. How is it going to make my life easier? But how does it function? Right. What are all the things that you had to think of to get it to that point? I'm sure it's, and this is yeah, why if he's holding it with this hand. How could he do that? It, that would require three hands. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. You know, now we have to come up with yeah, something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why me sometimes medical development in R&D, I think, can be very costly because it can take a long time to get it to that point. And then also you want it to be safe as well, in addition to easy and foolproof, but the safety is a big issue. So what led you to diabetes? Um, I had had uh, some businesses before and they were successful and actually I sold them and I was retired Pam. And a friend of mine, his name was George, and he was a very severe type two dia uh, person with diabetes. And um, he came to me and he said, Chris, look at my fingers. I can't feel things. I hate poke poking holes in my fingers all the time. You've invented so many things. You've got like 40 patents. Can't you invent something that would I don't have to poke my fingers, which has now become called alternate sight. Um, and so I said, he was my friend. I was retired. I uh, picked up the challenge and I developed something that while I was doing it, I found a way to make it painless. Now I came up with something that was as big as like a Coke can and it was somewhat complicated to use. And I made three of them for my friend, George, just in case one broke. And he was an extremely kind guy. He gave two of them to friends of his that had diabetes. About six weeks later, he came to me and he said, Chris, you got to come out of retirement. He said, worldwide, there's a half a billion people. In the United States alone, there's 34 million people who have to poke themselves or should poke themselves every day, should poke themselves. Several times, day. yes. Several yeah. times. And we don't do it. We don't do it as often as we should. Uh, so I said, George, I'm not that big a businessman. You know, I, I retired and stuff. He said, I'll run the business for you. You just make this thing so it's small, it's practical, you can hold it in one hand and, and, and make it like we said before, what good is something that would do wonderful things if it can't be used, if it's too complicated to use. So in that process, I developed Genteel and that's how Genteel came about. He started running the business. He was a very successful businessman. Um, and about six months later, um, his family came to me and said, Chris, you got to buy your friend George out. This business is so in consuming and his health is failing. So you need to buy him out. And I did. And Pam, that's how I became, uh, that's how Genteel started. So wow. it was really started as a philanthropic organization. Amazing. And and uh, and I have been absolutely, and everybody here is absolutely caught up in the wonderful results that we're getting by eliminating pain. And we can talk more about pain um, and, and all the bad things that pain does to our subconscious that we're not even aware of. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that because so for those of you listening, if you've not seen it, Genteel is a lancing device that is painless. Sounds impossible, but Dr. Chris Jacobs has made it possible. But pain is such an important topic. And I believe you have some research and information that you can share more about that before we go into the device and how it works. Because really what you're doing and the reason behind it is bigger than just avoiding, you know, a, a typical finger prick, let's say. There's there's yeah. so much more to it. 
No, absolutely. The the um, we just finished both for regulatory purposes and because we're very interested, 110 uh, patient clinical study about evenly divided between type one and type two uh, diabetes, about evenly uh, balanced between men and women. And one of the most amazing things is we found is that subconsciously, if you know when I push a button, something is going to hurt, you will find excuses and reasons not to do it. Even if you're not willing to admit to yourself consciously, I don't want to do this because it will hurt me. And the amount and increase in frequency that people tested after they had Gentile in their hands instead of a painful Lancer was incredible. And their A1C dropped, this is by actual clinical study, of almost, well, a little bit over three quarters of a percent, which is a lot. I that mean, is a lot. That's almost one. Yeah. And metformin, which is the number one prescribed drug, uh, will advance, will lower A1C by a half to a little over one. So we're right in the ball park. And of course, there's no side effects for doing this more often. There's many reasons why um, testing more often will lower your A1C, but it's non-disputable. The more often you test, the lower is going to be your A1C. It is the this has turned out to be, George started all this, my friend George, but this turned out to be an incredible development in treating diabetes. Test more often where you don't hurt. And uh, you will adjust so many things in your life automatically. It's sort of like grabbing the steering wheel of a car and now steering it rather than just letting it run by itself. That is so true. And people are sometimes not testing or testing once a day, maybe, maybe twice. And some doctors don't even really prescribe how often to test. The ones that see type ones tend to know the more you test, the better it will be. But when it comes to type two, people aren't really pushing people to test. And that is interesting because as you've just pointed out, the more you test, the lower your A1C will be, which means you will be healthier and hopefully have no damage to any of your organs. Um, you'll know what actions to take. People say, well, why should I test? I go to the doctor every three months, but you need to test. So then you know what action to take, whether that's how much medication to take, or maybe how you're going to plan a meal or if it's safe for you to exercise and so many other things. So this is, this is really incredible. Well, one thing that we recommend uh, to people um, that's really valuable is to test your favorite foods because amazingly, just like we found that pain really turns people off from testing, uh, even though they think they're going to overcome it, uh, subconsciously it works insidiously behind the scenes. We also found that food spikes different people with different foods. Let me explain, for example. Um, uh, if I eat an apple, it'll spike my blood sugar. Now, uh, Anita who is my uh, assistant, she could eat apples all day long and it'll maybe raise her, raise her uh, blood sugar 10 points. On the other hand, carrots, I can eat as many carrots as I want and, and carrots will spike her blood sugar. For the price of a little notebook and a pen, I recommend, strongly recommend people take their foods and map them. Okay, so I can't eat apples anymore, 
but I like pears just as much and pears don't spike my blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful way that you can lower your A1C. This was not done in the clinical study because it was just random. But it, uh, Pam, it is a wonderful use of your time. And the way you run the test is you don't eat anything for two hours. Then you eat whatever the test food is. You measure your blood sugar before you eat it and a half an hour after you eat it. And, and then you see how much this food spiked your blood sugar. So then you just make a list of, here's foods I still like, but they don't spike my blood sugar. Switch from, in, in my case, from apples to pears. And, it, and that in itself will considerably lower your A1C because you won't be spiking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so true. These very small things, and, and I think it has so much to do with, like, with the intention, if we're paying attention to it, writing it down, you know, and people, I know people hate food diaries, myself included. I once had a trainer tell me I was going to keep a food diary. I rolled my eyes at him, but it helped because you realize, oh. I mean, even if you're not counting carbs and blood sugar before that, even you understand where you might be eating too much of a not so great healthy food that you should just be avoiding more often than even. And that same food may be just fine for your friend. Yeah, it might. It might. That's true. Yeah. No two people are ever alike when it comes to blood sugar and what's happening in our microbiome and, and everything else. And the reason for that is the, the gut in your bacteria. It grows differently in different people. So my gut is, is different than my friend's gut is. So, uh, and this is where Gentile is extremely valuable because you can do this te whole test painlessly and you don't have to keep doing it. Unlike a food diary, you do this once and you can wait six months before you have to go back and maybe tune it up and see if you have to check these same foods again. Mm. Yeah, we're talking about the food here. For those of you listening, we're not talking about waiting six months to check your blood sugar again. No, no, we're, we're checking talking for the food. That particular food will that particular food still spike my blood sugar? Mm. Very interesting. So this yes, is a, good, a good use of Gentile, by the way, because it won't hurt, and so you can test as much as you want. That's really true. Yeah, even. Uh, there's been times where I've tested a, a few weeks ago, there was a few months ago, there was a time when I thought I'm drink, I was drinking more water, which was normal, urinating more, which is a sign. And I thought, could it be? And I checked my blood sugar and it was evening. It was after eating some fruit, dragon fruit to be specific. So I went, I got my son's glucose meter and I checked and my blood sugar was like 140, 150, which I was shocked. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, maybe I am, maybe I'm pre-diabetic or something like this. So I went later, got my A1C checked and it was, it was fine. However, with that anticipation of checking, even though I'm so familiar with the subject, I do it all the time for my son. It's no big deal. He, you know, just holds his hand out and can do it. but it still hurts and it's not something that I would want to be doing all the time. So really happy for the device that you've created. So having said that, shall we walk through um, and talk a little bit more about Genteel and how it works and how, what is it that makes it pain-free? How does that even happen? I'm sure people are, are very curious to know. Yes, um, it's, there's five steps that make it pain-free. One of the most important is that um, after Gentile, you put it, first of all, we are the only standalone FDA device cleared to, and CE cleared that you can test anywhere on your body. Every other vacuum, every other Lansing device you have to test on your fingers, it's mandated. Hmm. With Gentile, you can test anywhere. And of course, the pain nerves in your fingers are very intense. 
And one of the worst things, we sell a lot, by the way, to people like musicians that need the tactile sensation yeah. in their fingers to, in order to play their instruments. Because we can test anywhere on the body, and I'm going to show you uh, how we do that. So the, the important point is that we apply vacuum immediately over the lance site. So the, the, the lance only goes, really doesn't lance. Most lances work by poking so deeply that you bleed, literally you bleed. Yes. What Gentile does is it forms a channel in the skin and then applies a vacuum. And like every kid knows that drinks soda through a straw, vacuum will lift liquid. So the, the vacuum pulls the liquid up makes it sit right there on the skin, perfect. And then you can test it with your meter. So very shallow channel channeling. We don't lance deep enough to bleed. The vacuum then brings the blood to the surface. At the moment of lancing, you can feel a kind of a thump. And like a dentist that taps you when he's giving you the injection, that, that um, suppresses the and all this happens automatically. You don't have to adjust anything. So that vibration masks the pain. If there were any pain left. Also, um, believe it or not, it takes time for pain nerves to work. They can't work instantly. They have to build up. And this genteel goes in, out, and goes back to the, 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 the lance, the, the tiny lancing part goes back to sleep, you might say. And it all happens in 18 one thousandths of a second. So it happens so fast, the pain nerves don't get a chance to react. Wow. All this is built in. And that's what George said. You got to make it so you just put it against your skin, push a button, and it's all automatic. Amazing. And so that... That is the that is the mechanical way that we um, uh, and of course there's the inherent thing that if you're not testing in a painful area which is your fingertips, it the same thing would not uh, hurt. Now why can't you test alternate site with other um, uh, lancers? No vacuum. Mm. So it would go. You'd have to lance so deeply without vacuum on an alternate site that that in itself would hurt as much as testing on your fingers. I see. I was going to ask you that question, but I wasn't sure if that was something like proprietary or. No, no, it's just, just the vacuum. OK, so if you want, we can run it since we're doing video. Yes, please. We don't do the. Uh, at this point, we are not selling the meters, um, so it works with absolutely any meter. I'm going to put the test strip in. Okay. And then you just take the you take the device and all you do is put it up against your skin, push the button, and the blood comes up. And there's the blood. Mm -hmm. No pain. You test it. I'm a little high today, uh, but that's because I ate this morning. And mm. that's it. You just test it the way everybody. Once the blood is at the surface, you test just the way you always tested before. No change. So when I'm using this, though, so my finger has to stay on the button, on the button. to make the vacuum work, right? Yeah, because there, there's a little hole. We didn't want to make this necessarily an instruction manual, but there's a little That's hole okay. in the middle of the of the button, and that hole loses the vacuum. That's connected to the vacuum chamber. So as long as your finger is on it, you're holding vacuum. Mm -hmm. And I can show you um, that this plunger has got a spring on it, mm -hmm. and the spring is pulling the vacuum. So the vacuum is pulling the spring in toward my wrist and the spring is trying to pull it away. So as I push the button, you can see the vacuum is being held. Now watch what happens when I lift my finger, you're gonna see the plunger comes out. 
Yeah, that's cool. If you're just listening, you need to go watch the video. That's really cool. Yeah. Do you yeah. have to hold your finger over the button when you push the plunger in or no? Nope, nope. Oh, you just, just push keep it your in. finger away from it because again, it's all automatic. Okay. You just cock it. Now, there is one other thing that I wanted to show and that is what we call redraw. Redraw says for those people with diabetes that have to test multiple times a day, you can poke once in the morning and then you can take the lance out because there's vacuum, it's going to draw the blood back up again, depending on how fast you coagulate and stuff, but it's going to draw the, the blood back up again uh, just from the vacuum. So if, if a little scab falls over, pulls over at the vacuum, we'll pull it off. And then you can just test the, um, uh, you can just test your blood again and again and again without, that's the point, without having to repoke. So for people with diabetes, Pam, it's life-changing. They go from having to poke themselves in their fingers maybe five to 12 times a day to one poke in the morning anywhere on their body, and they just don't have to make as many holes in themselves. It's amazing. I showed this to my son after we first spoke and you showed me how to do this. And he, he, he didn't believe me. He's like, I'm really scared. Like there is no way that this is not going to hurt. And I said, no, I said, trust me. So I did it on myself. And then he did it. He's like, he was nervous because he didn't believe me. And again, that, and, and that just confirms your point, no matter he's been doing this all his life since 20 months old. And still that thought that you're telling me it's not going to hurt, but it's going to hurt. So I'm waiting for the pain. And then it happened. And then the look on his face, I wish I would have videoed it. It was priceless. And he just said, this is sorcery. That didn't really happen. <laughs> he, <laughs> did, he, did, he just, he was, he was so shocked and we're like such big fans. So then I'm going around like, you know, checking everyone, doing everyone because it's, it's really, it's just, it's amazing. So just and really you'll test it. The, the, the nice thing is it's comfortable and it fits in your purse or wherever and you just use it. Yeah. No, I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The, uh, what, the, the marketing people, I'm much more engineering and, and product development, but the marketing people had a slogan for a while. It was wow instead of ow. Oh, yeah. I like that. It is wow, wow instead of ow. That is so yeah. true. Definitely amazing. That's just incredible. So now that you've, you've done, I mean, and this, it's really just, it's revolutionary. I've never seen anything like it. And I had heard about it before, but even then I'm like, really pain-free? Is it such a thing? But it really is such a thing. So yeah, and it's easy to use. You, you just pick it up. Yeah, it's different than any other lancing device, but it's in a in a way I liken it to riding a bike. Once you get the idea that you got to hold your finger on the button, mm -hmm. and the nozzle that goes against your your skin is clear, so you can look in and see. You can see the the um, uh, the blood, and when there's enough blood, you just take your finger off the button, take it away. And, and there's a really nice video uh, about it. It's just called um, genteel.tips hmm. on the website. That's okay. an instruction video. Yeah, we'll definitely be referring a lot of people to that video. And in, in, the, um, in the package, it comes with there's the different colors that go the contact tips and is that right. for how how deep it mm -hmm. can go okay yep mm -hmm. which Everybody makes it also kind of fun comfort. it's tuned for maximum comfort that's what you do i like this this feels the best to me i'm going to try another tip oh that even feels better i'm going to use that one amazing that's how that's how it works comes with six comfort tips it's great. And they're, and they're really like nice, happy, vibrant colors. So I think it just adds to 
kind of it it doesn't feel as medical i'm so sorry other device companies it doesn't feel as medical as as other companies because you can get different colors and it is colorful and like this one turquoise blue one i have here i or blue i just i love this color and it's a happy color there it's not so black like like so many are and that's okay if you you want something that's black um but but the colors are happy. Black is available. Also, particularly for your listeners that have children, we include some really nice stickers. And, yeah, and, that's true. And, and I and we have girl stickers and guys and you know football stickers and princess stickers and um, <clears throat> one of the things that moms do. I think they're wonderful psychologists. Uh, when the device comes. Uh, instead of saying to the child, hey, we're going to use this new device like you had to with your son, it's going to not hurt and, and so on. They say, hey, let's decorate this. So if the girl's name is Lulu, there's letters, L-U, L-U, that's yours. And which sticker do you want? And then mom uses it on herself. And uh, we've seen moms then go to put it away. And and instead of forcing the kid to... to um, you know, now this is the new way you're going to do it. The kid will always say, well, when is it my turn? Because she, she, she did the sticker, she did it on herself, she didn't impose it on her, you know, and of course, every child is different and every mom's relationship with their child is different. But that technique of the stickers and integrating it into their regular life without it being a forced issue, uh, but of course, wow, instead of ow, as soon as the first time it doesn't hurt. We've been at trade shows and literally seen kids cry. Because, I, you know, when you tell them, you never have to poke your fingers again. Ever. Uh -huh. ah, let me do it again. And, and uh, we've even had kids uh, um, have low blood sugar contests. <laughs> they just see who can have the lowest blood sugar. And it's it's cheating to run around the house um, uh, to lower your blood sugar before testing. Yeah, yeah. I like so the it, thing with the stickers and then, you know, using different colors because for, for stuff, like especially in the case of type one, you didn't have a choice. No, there's not a lot of choices that you you have with it. So I think it empowers children as well to even put that sticker on because then they feel like they had a say in it. They had a choice in it. And yeah. that makes a huge difference in acceptance. Particularly if you, they put their name on it. Mm -hmm, for sure. And then, and then there's the football. Most of the boys like dinosaurs and we have dinosaur stickers. Oh, that's cool. My son loved dinosaurs when he was young. Yeah, right. Right. So if you had a dinosaur sticker, he's he's not going to mind using it at all. That's true. That's true. Wow. See, even I'm saying wow still now. So it's true. Yeah, wow instead of wow. <laughs> it is. It is still wow. It's still wow now. Amazing. So what are your what other problems are you going to solve for us in the future? Um, one thing I'm working on um, now um, is, are you familiar with heel sticks with babies? How they have no. to do it? How they have to what? They have to cut the child's heel to get the blood to do the panel study. Yes, yes. When they did that to my son, I was horrified. Yeah, well, we're thinking, and it hurts and it bleeds and the mom gets, has sees the child's blood all over. Um, we are inventing a, uh, a device that the, the nurse just puts on the heel, pushes a button and no, it like genteel, no pain. Oh, amazing. And yet it'll collect it so the blood doesn't run all over. And then the, the nurse can just drop it on the panels and uh, testing. So that that's a, a future, thing that once we get going um that that's our next step much needed much needed because that test i i felt like it needed a lot of blood like 
not, I mean, yeah. excessive. I, it, it needs what it needs, but I was like, really, you need to take that much blood, like out of my newborn's foot. I was really, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And you were lucky that, uh, uh, you know, about 40% of the time they have to come back and do it again. Oh, so you were lucky you got it the first shot. Yeah, she did it the first time. It took some time to get enough, but she did. But it, it was, yeah, I, I do remember that very vividly. Wow, that's amazing. So there, yeah. there is, there's many places we could use some vacuum blood right. draws. Now, one of the things that is important to know about the blood from Gentile is it's the most current blood. Uh, by that, I mean, it's the actual blood sugar right now. Um, and it's not delayed. Um, like a CGM is a, is a great invention for some cases, but one of the major problems is if you went and ate a jelly donut, let's just say, and tested with Gentile, within five minutes, you'd start to see the blood sugar climb. With a CGM, it could take a half an hour. So if you were using it, it don't get me wrong. First off, a CGM is better than not testing at all. But then again, almost anything is better than not mm -hmm. testing at all. It's convenient. Uh, it has data tracking. Um, it, there are advantages to a CGM. On the other hand, you've got to wear something stuck to your arm. Um, and it also is electronic. It's somewhat complicated. And... Um, as opposed to what we like about, and I'm not saying that CGMs are bad, but I just like the idea you pick something up, you use it, you put it back and you're done. Yeah. And a lot of people can't afford CGMs, to be honest. Like we're not right. having really a national health system where it's covered for everyone here and it's quite expensive. We have private insurance or the expats we do and CGMs medical devices are typically not covered ever. Yeah. That, and that's it's why expensive. It is. And you will spend more per month on the replaceable parts of a CGM than Gentile, which will last you five years. It doesn't test for blood. For sure. And it doesn't, it isn't actually testing your blood. Let me tell you, explain. It tests what's called the interstitial fluid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. In our support group, the, I think one of the most common questions that's always asked is why is the CGM not saying the same thing as the finger? And, and that's the exact reason why. And there, there is always a margin of error between two devices, but one is coming from your blood and the other one is not. Um, well, I make the analogy, a CGM might be like a perfectly clear windshield on your car but one that's showing you the image of what happened 45 minutes ago. Oh. So it makes it hard wow. to draw. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah my, my son uses a CGM and, and I do, I love it. I wouldn't, change, I wouldn't change that. It does, like you said, it's convenient. It speaks to the insulin pump he uses. So there's a lot of benefits for us to have that. However, for calibrating and things, we have genteel because we yeah, still have to check. Right. And it's surprising when we do trade shows, uh, we, we, it's fun. We have a thing at, at trade shows, which I, you know, I can't wait for them to start back up after COVID, but we had a, a sign that says, guess your blood sugar. Uh, and the closest one who guesses their blood sugar at the end of the day wins a free genteel. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you come and it was so interesting because the people with the CGMs would look at their CGMs like they were cheating and they'd never win. They'd always be off by <laughs> people, people that w w are experienced with their diabetes and they, they know, oh, I feel, I feel like it's 135 and they would guess one of them would always win. Yeah. My son did that to me once. I said, what do you think it is? And he I either didn't have a CGM at that time or he didn't look or didn't want to look. And I was shocked. He, I was like, no way. Cause I thought he'd be much higher. He was really, really close. So yeah, right. they know people know that they, right. they, they get really, people with diabetes get really, really good at this. 
Well, the International Society of Pediatric Endocrinology is happening in Abu Dhabi later this year in October. So I would love for you all to come to that. And, you know, if all- Might work continue, out. Are they going to have well. it or is COVID going to stop it? Do you no, think? no. I think they're going to have it. Things have slowly opened back up. We just um, wrapped up. I say we like I was, you know, part of it. But no, uh, Dubai just wrapped up Expo um, at the end of March. And mm -hmm. that was amazing. And people from all over the world came. And we're still wearing masks, you know, there's mask mandates inside and things like that. But knock on wood, so far, everyone um, has been doing really well and healthy and all these shows. And we even had um, Arab Health in February, this last February. Yeah, right. And that's a huge show. So that, um, that took Arab place Health and that was and, wonderful. Yeah, Arab Health and Medica are the two big ones. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah. And it, it was nice to see people back. Um, and it, I think this next year we'll be probably back very close to, to pre-COVID numbers. It was still quite crowded. So yeah, I enjoy meeting people a lot, you know, and, and seeing the wow instead of ow, you know? And, yeah. Oh, we'd love to have you here. And I'm sure there's a lot of people with diabetes that would appreciate meeting you as well. But anyway, so... Thank you so much for your time. Um, and again, telling us how you came up with, with Genteel and how actually George encouraged you to take up this challenge. We're so glad you accepted the challenge. Thank you so much for making all of our lives easier and pain-free. Um, we very much appreciate it. And I very much appreciate, Pam, you allowing me to tell people not only about Genteel, but for them to realize that one of the, even no matter how much you think pain is not going to influence your behavior, when you know that you're going to push a button and it'll hurt, it will alter your behavior. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about pushing the button with Genteel, Pam, is it just won't hurt. You just get the blood, you go about your business. And one, I, I should, uh, one thing I would want to mention, we talked about alternate sites. Our favorite site, particularly for people with diabetes getting up in the morning, is one inch or about two and a half centimeters up from your knee. Mm. You put your feet on the floor and you test there. So I'm recommending that uh, for anybody that has a genteel or will have a genteel. And the reason is that I guess nature knew when you were a kid, you were going to be an idiot and skin your knees all the time. <laughs> so it put very few pain nerves in your knee area. Oh, wow. But because it's a moving joint, it needs a lot of blood. Uh huh. So that's like the Holy Grail. And that would, that'll be my final tip. That is a wonderful place where you can go. There's a lot of blood and very few pain nerves. See, I learned, I, I learned something throughout this whole discussion, but you even dropped one more tip. And that I just wanted to, to throw that out because people that do test on their knee, particularly in the morning when they first get up, they just swing their feet down, put it on the floor and bang. Um, just love that test site. Amazing. And it's out of, out of, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Once you, once you get up, you don't worry about it at all anymore. Going to make my son do that tomorrow morning or see if he's, if he'll let me be like, Hey, here's a new wow. Instead of Al, Dr. Chris said this. <laughs> yeah. You got to have him. I got to meet him sometime the next time we're on a zoom call. Yeah, just definitely. Definitely. He, I think he would love that. And he's, He's one of these people that's very curious about how things work and things like that. So right. I'm sure he would he would love to probably pick your brain and, and learn more. He would love right. that so much. Thank you right. so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. It's a wonderful meeting with you and, and all of your listeners. Thank you. Have a lovely day.